Well, the pandemic slowed a lot of things down over the last year, but according to our next guest, voting was not one of them. We're joined now by Mike Melillo, CEO and co-founder of DOCWA, a reservation platform for marina docks and slips. So Mike, I was reading your notes and you say that bookings through DOCWA were up over 300% this past March over the last year. Why is that? Do you see that trend, this boating boom continuing even after the pandemic ends? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. We, uh, we caught lightning in a bottle. And I think a lot of it was driven by two major components, which were cities lost their monopolies on jobs and the push to remote work. And there was nothing else to really do. The boating industry was facing a major issue pre-COVID in which millennials in particular were not boating. For the first time in nearly two decades, the number of boat buyers under the age of 40 increased more than those over the age of 60. And last summer, if you were looking to get outside, which most of us were, there were very few options. And it combined to be the perfect confluence and we were in the right place at the right time. So you say that more and more folks under the age of 40 were purchasing some of these boats. Uh, what do you think is behind that trend? Is that just something that is shifting throughout time? Or is it because throughout this pandemic, so many folks have had more discretionary income as they left their pricey rents um, in some of those apartments, went to the suburbs, uh, weren't going out, weren't spending money on food and dining. Did they decide to then take those funds and put it in boats or is there something else going on there? No, I, I think you nailed it. And you can see it through all the trends on Zillow, especially in coastal towns around the country. When you were paying five or $6,000 a month for a rent in Boston or Manhattan, now you had additional discretionary income. You were living in the suburbs. And more importantly, you had more space. And it just brought together, I think, a lot of folks in a lot of areas where historically they probably wouldn't have the same access to one another. And because there were no concerts, sporting events last year, everybody was looking for some way to socially get outside, be safe, and uh, enjoy their time together in particular. And so I think boating just met the need. And I don't see that trend going away. I think a lot of companies are going to be struggling with this hybrid remote work model for a long time. But in general, I think more people are moving out and away from cities. And that's going to help carry us moving forward for, I think, several decades ahead. Now, for those who aren't familiar, your platform is a two-sided digital marketplace. You're helping to hook up the boaters with the marinas. I'm curious what um, capacity is like right now. I mean, I know a lot of places are saying, you know what, we're out of boats. Can't buy them right now. They're on back order. Marinas don't have available slips. Have you found that as much as the industry has boomed for you, um, are you finding that it's harder and harder to make those matches just because of supply constraints? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. We are definitely facing it as we, we kicked off this, this interview. We're up almost 300% year over year. There is definitively a supply capacity uh, that we're facing, but our software in particular helps optimize not just when people are looking to find slips, but for operations in particular to more efficiently manage their inventory. I think that's one of the more unique characteristics of the boating space relative to other hospitality industries. They can backfill and they can re-rent out slips when customers who stay with them seasonally or annually take off and go on trips over the summer. And that's really at the crux of the value of our platform or any marketplace in general is when that inventory becomes available, you need to make quick, actionable decisions. And by elevating both sides of the marketplace, we're helping marinas have their best financial years they've ever had. And we're not even at Memorial Day just yet. So we're trying to find ways to add value, both by filling latent demand, but also by helping the marinas just optimize their back office as much as possible. Because in many of these coastal towns in particular, there is a limit on the number of staff and employees that are available due to the restrictions in place. So they're trying to do more with less, and we think that's where software can actually add the most amount of value. I'm curious to know, especially as the labor market, you know, continues to heat up, you know, we just got some of those jobless claims just yesterday. They fell uh, to new pandemic lows. Do you see that potentially weighing on your business as those restrictions lessen and some of those docs are able to bring back more and more workers, especially as we have more folks looking for work now and going back to their jobs? 
Yeah, I think this is honestly where the marine industry was one of the biggest benefactors, where they did not have to lay off anywhere near as many folks as the restaurant and hospitality did last year. So they didn't see anywhere near as much attrition on their staffing and I think are far better suited to meet the demand uh, this year, especially in coastal towns like we live in in Newport and in around. Um, unlike hotels and, and F&B in particular, where a significant portion of their employees were either furloughed or laid off, and in conjunction to that with what's happened in the housing markets in these highly desirable coastal towns, it's almost priced a lot of these employees out of those markets. And I think that's a real problem for several verticals in the hospitality space in general. But because the marine industry was able to operate last year, keep their doors open, the retention of employees was much higher relative to the others in the space. And I think that's going to be a big benefactor this summer because the demand is off the charts and we do need people to be out there to help service and cater to these guests. What comes next for Dakwa? I mean, in, in terms of innovating, I, I mean, I can under, I understand the, the basic business model, but what do you do to sort of, you know, continually offer something new and innovative uh, to both sides of, of your customer base? Yeah, we're super excited. We just recently added a new board member who was the third employee at Uber and helped scale their engineering team for the last decade. And in particular, uh, Ryan, who's joined us recently, is going to help us really focus on the boater side. So the majority of our development and initiatives to date have been on building marina management software in the back office of these businesses. We think there's a lot of opportunity to help innovate on behalf of the boater while they're actually out on the water, even if they're not looking for a reservation. And our main primary focus for the next 12 to 18 months is going to be to expand into that boater side. And we also have another platform that will be launching relatively soon over into the camping space where the parallels are, are quite quite similar to the marine industry. And just in general, our entire mission at the Wanderlust Group is to help people get outdoors. And if we can leverage our technology to help make that process